Here I will show the decay of a radioactive element. For this, we first need a decay equation. Now, this is n. n is the amount of um, the radioactive element that is still present. So, say for example, rubidium 87, then n means how much rubidium 87 is still there. And this equals then a certain starting composition of, in this case, for example, rubidium 87. So, this is n0. And this is then times the E to minus and then lambda times T. So this is the decay equation. So this is the actual part of the decay equation because N0 might conveniently be chosen as 1. It's like something like 100% of initial rubidium 87. And then we only have this latter part left. So then I want to show this in a plot, a simple function where on the x-axis there is one parameter, which in this case would be t. So here I copied in the um, equation from above. I don't need the n because this is what will be shown. And then the parameter here on the x-axis will be t from 0 to, say, for example, 5. And then I need to define the lambda. I can use a database here to get the half-life of, for example, rubidium 87. So I put in here half-life and then I'll get the, um, must be large one. Then I get the half-life, but in seconds, which I don't want to. And therefore I use another command to recalculate this into years. And then I get this into years and divide it by 10 to 9, and then this will be the half-life in billions of years, which is 48.14 rubidium 87. I could put in any other isotope and get the coding half-life. But now I don't want a half-life, but the decay constant lambda. So this is the half-life of um, rubidium 87. Now the relationship to the decay constant is that there's the natural logarithm, which is called log here, of 2 divided by the half-life of rubidium 87. And then this is the half-life at the decay constant in billions of years for rubidium 87. And then down here I have the, the, the according plot. Now this looks quite linear here, which is because I only plotted from 0 to 5 billions of years. And to make this uh, the real decay a little bit more visible, I make the um, maximum um, uh, time selectable. So T max, I want to um, change from say five to 500 billions of years. So this T max will be changed and then I execute. I don't want to see the half-lives all the time. And now I can change the maximum time here up to 500 billion years, and now I much better can see the decay here. Now it might be also interesting not only to see the amount of rubidium 87 that is still there, but also the amount of um, formed strontium 87. Now this part here is the amount of rubidium 87 still there. So after a certain time, it might be 0 0.99, 0 0.98, and so on. And the difference to one is the amount of strontium 87 that is produced. So this is why I calculate here the difference to the remaining rubidium 87 by one minus this remaining amount, and then plot the strontium 87 here as well. And then I can see the decay of the rubidium 87 and the increase of strontium 87. And of course, the crossover here at um, half the amount is exactly at 48.1 billion of years. And I could make this, I want to a little bit more, more clear, like putting on a, a frame looks a little nicer and then also label the frame a little bit. So I really know what is there. So this would be the age in billions of years, for example, and on the uh, y-axis there would be an increase, but also a decrease depending on the isotope. So this looks already a little bit better here, and I can see how with time rubidium 
the 87 decreases and strontium 87 increases. And this is uh, the very simple decay plot shown a little bit interactively.